Hi, my name is Jason Edwards, and today I'm going to be presenting about a material verification process within FFP assessments. Um, so this is just a little bit about me. Um, I'm project manager by Rosen, um, and my area of specialisation was, was within ILI, specifically around material properties and integrity management. Um, but I won't talk too much about myself. Let's move on to the presentation then. So this is just a little bit of an overview of what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and it's really centered around this material verification framework. And firstly, I want to talk about, you know, why this is important um, to establish material properties. And when I talk about material properties, I want to talk about pipe grade and toughness. Um, and then secondly, I want to talk about, you know, what is the material verification framework? Um, and we, we, we throw some words around here like enhanced ILI and NDT um, and pipeline DNA process. And I'll go through these a, a little bit later. And thirdly, most importantly, you know, how we're using this material verification framework to really help operators around the world. To firstly, you know, establish um, a robust knowledge of material properties. And secondly, you know, how they can use this as input into their integrity assessments, such as FFP assessments and MAOP reconfirmation. Um, so this first slide is really just about the importance of materials data. And when I talk about materials properties, you know, the two I want to focus on is really pipe grade and toughness, right? Um, and these really sit on the same level as, as, as the key components of integrity management, such as integrity threats, operating conditions, wall thickness, pipeline route, and seam type, right? And these two properties really form the foundation of our integrity management. And when I talk about integrity management, you know, I talk about MOP and, and and that's really defined by our diameter wall thickness and once again pipe grade, right? And when we look at it, fitness for service assessments, you know, assessment of metal loss features and assessment of crack like features really depends on, you know, your pipe grade as well as your fracture toughness, right? And when we look to the future of, um, you know, hydrogen conversion to hydrogen service, um, different pipe grades or materials may have different susceptibility to hydrogen assisted cracking or embrittlement. Um, so, you know, these material properties are really, really important and, and without a robust understanding of these material properties, we, we, we can't really start to make informed integrity decisions. Um, so pipeline records and, and how good are yours? And, and this chart really highlights, you know, the range in confidence levels that we see between different operators around the world. Um, on the left here, we have no records, unsafe operation and, and a high risk and we want to move down down this chart to, to get to full traceability on every single component um, and and there we have a, a low risk right and typically what we found you know most of the operators sit somewhere in the middle here where they have a you know a fairly good understanding of the design concept right through to a lot of good detailed information about um, pressure test records and mill certificates right but the question always remains, you know, do you have full traceability on every single component, every single pipe or spool that has been laid? Um, so even though we think we may have good records, things can always get missed, right? Gaps within the processes start to appear, especially as operators um, change hands or owners, new owners come in, new service providers come in. You know, we see this breakdown of, of processes and, and we see traceability of crews and documentations of replacements um, cannot be as good, right? You know, and really are your records being updated correctly, right? Um, so this this all leads to this unknown unknown and this is what I really want to kind of cover today. So why are material factors often not addressed? Um, the first one is really practicality. You know, where do you start? You may have hundreds of kilometers of pipelines and 10,000 plus individual pipes, right? Um, you know, cost as well. Um, the cost of excavations is really expensive, right? And a lot of these locations are in not easily accessible locations under roads, rivers, environmentally sensitive areas, right? Limited solutions, you know, traditionally, um, the way of obtaining material properties is to conduct, you know, destructive testing on cutouts and, and coupons, right? Um, so this become, can become quite expensive and obviously time consuming. And the last one is, is know-how. You know, what exactly do I need to do and where and what material properties do I need and what, what do I need them for? So previously, these four factors were often a stopper. But with new ILI and NDT methods available on the market, you know, we're, we're now able to address a lot of these issues that have been, you know, previously both prohibitive in terms of co complexity and cost. Um, and so when we look at ILI, you know, ILI can really provide material property data on every single joint 
um, and really reduce the amount of excavations necessary, right? And then we also look at new non-destructive techniques that are able to measure pipe strength. And lastly is really the know-how and, and it's really around, you know, a structured and but flexible material property framework that we can adjust to suit the needs of the operator. And so this is what I really want to talk to, to you today about. Um, so this is what we've been developing over the last four or five years, this material verification framework, and this is what I'm going to talk to you over the next few slides. Um, and it's really around, you know, first first step is really inline inspection, right? And this is where we want to gather data on material properties and defect anomalies, right? Um, step two and three is really, you know, step two and three go together. Step two is pipeline DNA. And this is where we, we really want to define the populations and associated material properties, right? And I'll go through what that means later. Um, and step three is, is you know, invest interrogation of existing records and infield inspection. And it's really material verification to verify the properties and gain confidence within our data integration and pipeline DNA process. And lastly, we have step four, which is all our integrity assessments. So it's our FFP assessments, it's our ECAs, um, and I'll go through some case studies about, you know, how we, we, we've done this for operators. So enhanced ILI, you know, what is enhanced ILI? Um, it's really just obtaining material properties and defect anomaly data through ILI, right? And, and for us, it's really centered around this um, ROMAT pipe grade sensor as, as what we call it here. And this really provides us this critical data set, you know, pipe grade or, or yield strength. Um, that links all the different material properties across all the different feature diff, um, detection technologies. And we can incorporate this into a single um, MFL tool setup or ILI tool and it allows us to capture four data sets within one inspection, right? We get the Romat PGS, which is the pipe grade. We get our metal loss here. Um, we get our deformation here and we get our XYZ mapping, right? And by really integrating these data sets, we, we use this process called the pipeline DNA evaluation process and, and it really to provide us a pro reliable population approach that can identify differences in pipe properties and attributes down to the individual pipe or component level and I'll go through that in the next few slides. Um, but additionally by you know combining this with with other data sets such as crack and hard spot detection technologies you know we're able to gain an extra level of detail with that allows us to increase the confidence within the population assessment, as well as provide, you know, information on the different defects that really exist within our line, which are really critical inputs into our FFP assessments. So pipeline DNA process, and 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 what is it, right? Um, and and it really is about defining the populations. Um, and so a population refers to a group of pipes with the same grade, wall thickness, manufactured process, and manufacturing or construction date. Um, an example of that is really just a batch of pipes from a mill with a consistent manufacturing process, right? Um, and what we do is we interrogate all the different data sets collected from ILI, with yield strength being this, this key defining factor. And, and by analysing, you know, your wall strength or the strength distributions and combining it with other known pipeline characteristics, like your wall strength, um, wall thickness, sorry, um, diameter, pipe type, and joint length, you know, we're then able to define these individual populations of pipe. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. So this is really defining the populations using strength and assigning a grade. And here, um, in this diagram here, you can see yield strength on the left here, and that's log distance on, on the bottom there. Um, and here we have the two different colors. So we have this orange color here and this blue color here. The orange color is really just, um, these are two different populations, what we call it. And each pipe is given an individual yield strength value. And we really look at the distribution of yield strength as a whole across the entire population here. And when we start to analyze these distributions, we can start to pull out individual populations. And we can see that, you know, this orange here was actually a replacement or a rerouting around a, around a new development. And you can see it's designated by a different um, yield strength. Right? Um, and when we overlay it with the XYZ mapping, we can, we can start to see this really clearly, right? Um, and when we look at this distribution of yield strength, it's, um, it's described by this normal distribution, right? And when we go ahead and define a grade, we don't use the average or the, or the mean. We use um, 
basically three standard deviations away from the mean. So we use a conservative approach with, where majority of the pipes would meet this minimum requirement of X56. Um, so really, this is just um, really the output of the pipeline DNA process. Um, there's a lot going on here, but basically each of these colors or symbols represents an individual population, right? And you can start to see this is your pipe yield strength once again versus log distance of the entire populate, um, part time, entire length of the, the pipeline. Um, and each of these populations is, is defined here. And we assign each population, you know, obviously a number. You've got your total length, your number of pipe lengths, um, your assigned grade, your pipe type, and a description. So each individual population has its unique characteristics, and these are defined within the pipeline DNA process. Um, when we start to look at this, this blue population here, we would call that something called the main population, which is typically your original construction. Um, and we start to define that as, as, as grade X52. Um, and then we can start to look at, you know, pull out these individual populations and we see that population D2 is a highway crossing, usually de designated by a higher yield strength and we can see that. Um, and then we can start to pull out all these individual populations here and assign a grade and, and define the characteristics for these. Um, so step three, um, in order to really verify and validate the data from the DNA process, um, we really need to conduct um, material verification through both destructive and non-destructive testing. So, so traditional methods of strength determination are to remove coupons and conduct destructive testing, but this can be often you know, expensive, time consuming and dangerous, right? So there are new NDT methods out on the market for determining strength. Um, these are IIT and MMT. Um, and these allow us two things, right? Allow us to measure the strength of the tighter tolerance and confidence in ILI, you know, validating our PGS tool. But secondly, they provide more accurate inputs into the DNA process, right? Um, fracture toughness is another one. And, and currently there's no commercially available NDT technique for determining fracture toughness. So you can only still do that from destructive testing. Um, and then the other two are chemical composition and surface metallographic imaging, right? And these two really tell us info on the different vintages of pipes, the pipe maker and the pipe manufacturing process. And these can really tell us a lot about the characteristics of the populations and, and if we can combine, combine certain populations together and match up with, with our records. Um, so refining the pipeline DNA. Um, so ILI is really used to produce this first initial pipeline DNA, right? Um, but as we, you know, gather more records, conduct more infield testing, right? You know, we continually refine the pipeline DNA. We're able to really characterize the populations in more detail and we're really able to start to build the detail within our pipeline DNA. And as more data really comes available, we can combine or separate certain populations out. So it's really an iterative process which 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 starts with ILI and 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 continues on for for the years to come um so step four the good stuff MAP reconfirmation and input into FFP assessments you know how is this really going to benefit you in your integrity decisions right so this is just a case study here um basically we identified a population of pipe that was not known to the operator um, as you can see here, we've got a SMYS of X42 here. And basically through the pipeline DNA process, we identified this, this population of the pipe was actually below the SMYS. Um, and this was confirmed through some in situ non-destructive testing. Um, and once this was confirmed, you know, the, the operator put in a, a replacement program to replace these, these um, population of pipe, right? So case study number two, um, once again, we have this pipe yield strength on the left and, and log distance, which you, you've seen quite often. Um, this particular operator had um, two different manufacturers um, or two different populations, but the traceability for these populations had been lost. The, the operator didn't know exactly where these populations sat with on their pipeline. So when we ran the pipeline, when we ran our Romap PGS tool and did the pipeline DNA processes, we found we could clearly see 
the two different populations that the the operator was interested in. We can clearly see that they were differentiated by this yield strength, right? All the other characteristics of wall thickness, pipe joint length, and diameter were the same, but the differing factor was this yield strength. And we could clearly pull this out and start to define, you know, exactly where this population sat within the pipeline and, the, and exactly what were the characteristics of this population. Um, case study number three. So input into assessment of crack like anomalies. So this particular operator experienced a pipeline leak due to cracking within a hard spot. Um, and as you can see here, we have zoomed in versions of the, the, the micro, micro, microstructure. Um, and basically we ran a, a number of ILI services for this for this operator, Romat PGS as well as metal loss, crack, hard spot detection, really in an effort to, to aid this MOP reconfirmation. Um, so we actually had cutouts from this failed section here. So we were able to conduct some fracture toughness test, testing on this. We also conducted chemical analysis, tensile testing, um, and some Sharpie impact testing on, on these sections as well. So all this, testing really really helped us within the you know firstly the material verification process as well as input into the ffp assessments in the end and i'll go through that a little bit later so really for this this is once again the population overview and really material verification was used as an essential first step to really define these populations right and by running enhanced ili we were able to get an overview of all the defects in the line and which populations they're occurring on. And as you can see here, we have this orange and blue, A1 and B1, right? And these really make up 90% of the line. Um, and about 60% of the cracks were within these two main populations, right? So when we start to overlay all these defects onto our populations, we can start to see if there's cracking in a particular population or location along the line. We can also see if there's you know, overlay cracking defects against other defects. And, and um, we can start to see hard spots of dense in cracks, which are immediate threats. So really this overview is so that we can really define the material properties for each population for input into the FFP, as well as define areas of interest that we may want to carry out, you know, in ditch verification on. So there may be populations where we need more material properties or particular defects of interest, right? So in ditch verification plan, um, this is really important so that we can define a dig so we can hit multiple locations or multiple populations in, in one dig. Um, so within this, um, we were able to um, choose four dig locations and hit seven different populations within this, um, as well as you know line them up with particular features of interest. So in this particular dig location, we had three populations and one of the populations or one of the areas of interest had a crack. So we we're able to really assess this crack and actually um, verify that there is a crack there as well. So defining your locations for material verification is a really, really important first step, right? And once again, we have this population A1 and B1, which the majority of the defects um, were on. So defining and verifying these populations is, is, is really critical. And so when we looked into um, the chemistries of both A1 and B1, we found that they were very, very similar. And from this, we were able to use the fracture toughness values that we had for population A1. We were able to use them within our FFP assessments for population B1. So, so this really helped us to avoid using really conservative fracture toughness values for population B1. Um, so a bit of a summary of the, the results of the FFP assessment, but what I want to focus on here is just really the, the benefits of the material verification process. And, and it was really around optimizing your material verification plan. You know, we were able to carry out, you know, verification on seven different populations with only four digs. And the second one here is verifying the material properties of the different populations within the line, right? And that's really critical for the input into the FFP assessments. Um, but the most important one here was really able to assess the majority of the defects with representative or um, representative material properties, i.e. fracture toughness values, right? 
Um, and this really allowed us to limit the amount of unnecessary repairs due to any conservative assumptions of fracture toughness that, that may have been used within this crack assessment here. So in concluding today, just a bit of a summary about what I've covered today. Um, and it's really just around um, this integrated approach of enhanced ILI and integrity solutions, which, which we've been coming up with at Rosen here. And it really allows operators to, to gain this clear picture of the pipeline DNA of the entire pipeline from just a single one-time inspection. And you really get this big overview of your populations and pipe grade there. And then from there, you can do your material verification. Um, and one of the outputs of that is really to identify, you know, direct integrity threats from unknown populations or understrength pipes um, or anything that you're particularly interested in. Um, and this really underpins or, or, you know, the material properties really forms a foundation for these integrity management applications, such as fitness for service assessments, MOP validation or conversion to hydrogen service. Um, and, and the foundation, you know, we base a lot of our decisions on 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 um, material properties, and it's really ensuring that we have a robust understanding of these material properties before we go ahead and make all these integrity decisions. So that's my presentation today. Um, thank you for joining, and now I think we'll go on to the question and answer session. <laughs>